A little bed bump till I'm coming undone When am I gonna get some? I don't make him never hurt anyone Am I gonna get some, get some, get some A little bed bump till I'm coming undone Am I gonna get some, get some, get some Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Superstar Mayhem. I am Philip Ontario, and folks, we have a stacked card for you here tonight, including our main event, which we'll see Travis Barks here with the Raging Redneck Ray Geddes to take on Sean O'Connor, World Heavyweight Champion, Ben Hitman. Folks, those are two oddball tag teams, if I must say so myself. <laughs> Many folks they never heard of me, so I'm a lot of animosity myself, between those guys. I am that boy that we'll discuss that no more back. later back in the, like the, the broadcast. Rapid, and it appears that we are That's kicking so things real. off with the holder of the Money in the Bank briefcase and the Call All Stars champion, AJ Young. There he is. AJ Young in the last edition of Super Mayhem. The two things of note, one of those being that he joined me on commentary, the other being the more significant, in which he assaulted Christopher Wonder and put him out of action. Christopher Wonder, very understandably, was upset after what happened at the Royal Rumble. He went out for a fight, so I cannot fault AJ Young for retaliating to a fight. However, the actions that AJ Young took, the lows that he went, were just too much. There's a report on the AWF website that Christopher Wonder suffered back injuries and will be out of action for up to the next one to two months, thanks to AJ Young. I assume we're going to find out what AJ Young thinks of this news. I hope all of you learned a valuable lesson last week, and that lesson is in gratitude. Like when your tag team partner saves you from embarrassing yourself on click per view. You respond with gratitude. You don't respond by uppercutting and attacking the man who is trying to save you from embarrassment. My so-called partner showed his gratitude by attacking me, and I accepted his gratitude by putting him out of action. He may be gone for a month, he may be gone for two. Either way, regardless of what the situation is or how long he's out, when he comes back, I'll be waiting for him so I can finish the job. Christopher Wonder, you have no idea what you just started. You have no idea what you just did. You turned your back on the dynasty not once, but twice. But believe it or not, Chris, the dynasty will go on without you. The dynasty has the AWF World Heavyweight Championship and it has the Call All-Stars Champion and your Mr. Money in the Bank, which means at any point, I can cash this bad boy in and cement my legacy. I'm telling everybody from right now, it is a dangerous time to be a champion in the AWF because of me. Oh, oh boy. That's Sean Walsh, once again, the owner of the AWF. I did not expect Sean Walsh to come out here. Sean Walsh has a lot of history with the man in the ring, AJ Young. I wonder what he thinks of AJ Young's uh, statements there. I wonder what he thinks about what AJ Young did on the last edition of Superstar Mayhem to Christopher Wonder. I'm sure we're going to find that out right now. 
Hey, pal. Did you hear the news? I'm back. Sean Walsh back in charge of the AWF, just like the old times. Now, AJ, AJ, I'm sure you heard what I said when I made my return. All previous problems that I had with talent is in the past. And that includes you, AJ. I know we have quite a bit of history, but it's in the past. Clean slate. However, what you did on the last edition of Superstar Mayhem didn't exactly put us on a good start. Was not a fan of what you did to Christopher Wonder and putting him out of action. Personally, I didn't like it. See, I had plans for Christopher Wonder to be a part of the World Heavyweight Championship Elimination Chamber match that would be taking place at Meltdown. He was going to be one of the six competitors in that match. He was going to join World Heavyweight Champion Ben Hitman, Tank, Sean O'Connor, Travis Sparks, and the Raging Redneck Ray Geddes. He was going to join them. Now I don't have a sixth competitor, and that's my job to find a replacement for Chris Rubin. But your job, it isn't to be taken out on town. See, I get it though, AJ. You want to send a message. You're Mr. Money in the Bank. You're the Call All Stars champion trying to send a message to Chris Rubin. I get it. Been there, done that. But I hope you understand what I have to do. You did a, you did a bad. So, I have to punish you for that. So, you will not be taking Christopher Wonder's place in the Elimination Chamber match. But hey, you are you got money in the bank. You're good. But you're not exactly having the day off at Meltdown. You will be having a match at Meltdown. In fact, not only am I back in charge of the AWF, but I'm still in charge of Call All-Stars, which means I can make a Call All-Stars championship match, and look at that. I think it's a great idea. So, AJ, you will defend the Call All-Stars championship at Meltdown against the Goonie and Casey Gordon in a triple threat match. Good luck, champ. Oh, Sean, I don't understand what you have against me in the fact that you keep putting these obstacles in my way for me to overcome. You put me in a match against Casey Gordon and the Goonie, the latter of which I've beaten, the former I'm going to beat. But you know what? It's okay. Because now I get to make examples of the Goonie and Casey Gordon to prove to everyone that regardless of what obstacles are put in my way, regardless of what hurdles are put in my path, when everyone doubts me, I win.
ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Superstar Bay. We just heard the announcement from Sean Wald. The world heavyweight championship will be defended inside the elimination chamber at Meltdown. Sean Walsh announced an uprising. The AWF World Championship will be defended in the chamber. And now the World Heavyweight Championship also to be defended in the Elimination Chamber. Huge, huge announcement. World Heavyweight Champion Ben Hitman is going to get a little bit of an early taste of what's to come as four of the men in the chamber, including Ben Hitman, will be a part of all the main event in tag team match. The, the other man being Tang. Six participants has yet to be revealed due to Christopher Wonder's injury, who appeared to be who the sixth person was supposed to be. But for right now, we're kicking things off with our opening bout and junior heavyweight action. Al Martino. Reigniting our old rivalry here, fighting an old foe. The man who made his return at the Royal Rumble, Alberto Jr. And Alberto Jr. is being. He's not coming alone. Someone else is joining to the ring. I'm being told that this lady is. Known as Roxanne. Not much else. Yeah, not much else is known about her. She's had some kind of a association with Alberto. Wants to look more into that. But what we do know, Alberto is back. Came up short the rumble. Wants to get back on top once again. Fighting a man who these guys had the classic battles for the Cruiserweight Championship back years ago. El Martino was the first ever Cruiserweight Champion. Tonight it's not about the Cruiserweight Championship. But who's going to prevail here? Al Martino could use one win to bounce back. Alberto Jr. coming back with a win. That would be very beneficial to him. Oh, here comes Martino. Kicks. Oh. Off the ropes. The arm drag. Oh, well, oh, hold on. Al Martino getting distracted here. Oh my god. The knee to the back there. There's the answer, Gary. God. Well, not now we know why Roxanne is out here. Oh, here's a fisherman suplex. Alberto Jr. Feel, feeling very confident. There's a the hurricane Rana. Alberto Jr. Spoke with him after the Royal Rumble, and he said, uh, "All he's looking forward, all he's looking for, is a Alberto Tunity." I'm not exactly sure what that is, but that's what he's looking for. Mr. Insiguri, though, a Martino taking this. Alberto Tunity. It's a Hurricane Rana. Now the Irish whip in the corner. 
Elevated to the top. There's the Hurricane Rana. Great elevation there by Martina. Folks, don't forget. We have a another huge match besides our main event tonight. Another huge tag team match, in fact. Where we will see, the, for the third time, AFN will take on the Blood Brothers. But this time, the winners will become the number one contenders for the tag team titles. And the losers, the losing team must disband. Huge match coming up a little bit later on. Now, Alberto Jr. My God. And Roxanne bringing a chair in the ring. Referee's got to get that out of there. Alberto can't use that chair. He'll get disqualified. But look, here's the Hurricane Ron. El Martin, I'm going to let him use it. And look, come on. Roxanne on the apron, distracting on Martino. This isn't right. The referee getting the chair out of the ring. Martino coming. Oh! There's the heel kick. Heel kick by Alberto Jr. Oh no, no. Look at this. There's a kill switch. Oh no. One, two, and three. Just like that, Alberto Jr. picks up the victory. After the distraction from Roxanne at ringside, Alberto Jr. was able to capitalize, drop the kill switch. And he came back to Super Mayhem, walking out with a W. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Superstar Mayhem. In the ring is the world class athlete, Jay Nathaniel. Seen him over on Uprising, getting a chance here in Superstar Mayhem. What a chance he is getting against the junior heavyweight champion, Brandon Wolf. Non title, but still. A win over the champion would be huge. Brandon Wolf is also not just a junior heavyweight champion, but he's one of the hottest names in in call wrestling today. However, he is, hasn't been feeling too hot as of late. We heard him in the last edition of Superstar Mayhem, and man, that was that that was that was tough to listen to, folks. I gotta say, Brandon Wolf very upset that he lost to Sean O'Connor at the Call All Stars Christmas Special and lost the Call All Stars. Royal Rumble Championship Opportunity. I'm guessing Brandon Wolf is going to, he's going to try and prevail, he's trying to move forward. I wonder what's going through the mind of Wolf though, oh my god, running out of rules of form. So far, it looks like we're, we're witnessing an angry wolf right now. Charging right in Nathaniel. The quick strikes. Knife edge chop. Now the Irish whip into the corner. 
Elbow and there's a kick. What's this? Backbreaker into a neckbreaker. On the Enziguri. Brandon Wolf heading up high. He's going to the top rope. He wants Nathaniel to get up. And a big crossbody. One, two, but only a two. Oh, oh my god. He's just stomping the hell out of Jane Nathaniel's chest. It's a world class chest. Oh my god. Off the ropes. There's the drop kick. And oh my god. The back of the neck has got to be sore. Brandon Wolf perhaps setting up for the end here. Yes, he is. There's the wolf howl. Let's take a look at it again. There it is. The wolf howl. Brandon Wolf, he's dragging Nathaniel away from the, the ropes. And the cover, that's got to do it. And it does. Brandon Wolf picking up the victory over Jay Nathaniel here on Superstar Mayhem. Still got to wonder what's going through his mind after crazy already few early few months here for Brandon Wolf in the 2017. Oh, oh my. Well, if Brandon Wolf was looking to move forward. This is not what he wanted to see. This is not who he wanted to come out here. Sean O'Connor. The man that defeated Brandon Wolf. Making his way to the ring. God, what's this smug son of a bitch? What does he want? Isn't it bad enough that he took this took this title opportunity from Wolf? Let's see what he has to say. Oh, if it isn't Brandon Wolf, Brandon, 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 how you doing, buddy? How you doing? I see you got a big win. That's a plus. Didn't you come out last uh, on the last Superstar Mayhem and you sort of started bitching and complaining about how all you can do lately is lose? You're supposed to be the junior heavyweight champion, bud. You did have a shot at the Call of Stars title, but I mean, I took that away from you. You still got lots going for you, kid. So, so what's the matter? Tell me. Tell me, Wolfman. Puppy boy. It's reevaluating myself. After dropping the ball throughout 2016, I need to find something within me before I go back to the main part of the show. Before I be in the main event scene again. Well, uh, you you don't belong in the main event scene. I I think we've proven that, but there's a lot more for you, kid. There's a lot more than the main event scene. You are this junior heavyweight champion, are you not? Are 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 you not greatness? Are you not part of the Great Wolf family? Are you? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't look like that to me. To me, you look more like a bitch, a pathetic little bitch. You come out here whining and complaining, trying to get these fans on your side and feel bad for you? But you're nothing but a loser, Brandon. That's what you are. You can't just mope around about how much of a bitch and how much of a loser you are. you got to actually get back on the horse and work at it. You know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do for you, Brandon? I'm going to give you one more match. 
And the reason why I'm giving you this one more match is because we put on one hell of a match together. And I want another quality match like that. And I, I want another easy win. Because that's what you are, Brandon. You're an easy win. And I want to prove that I definitely deserve a shot at the Call of Stars Championship. So I will put that Call of Stars Championship match on the line one more time at the next Call of Stars special. What do you say to that? You know, at first I was going to decline that offer, but then you said something about my family name, the wolf name. You see, you're very pride and proud member of it. Doesn't take shit from anybody, including guys like you. And when you said that my family is a bitch of me, I won't take that! <laughs> I, I, I can't take you seriously, kid. I, I, I can't, even when you're angry and yelling at me. You still just look like a pathetic little bitch. But I'll tell you what, if you're willing to take that match, there's going to be one condition aside from that Call Stars Championship match. If you lose this last opportunity... You are banned from Call Stars 9. Are you sure you want to do that? Are you sure that you want to put put your bitch family on the line here? You're damn right I do. Because I'm not going to be fighting for just my family name. I'm be fighting for myself and everybody. I'm going to be fighting for the family that have died in battle just like my great 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 grandfather that died and dog of backing, ironically, died in Canada. I'm gonna fight for him and with my family. Not with that, I'm going to kick your ass! You're probably expecting me to talk about Kevin Cash. You're probably expecting me to talk about the fact that I got pinned by Kevin Cash last Superstar Mayhem. You're probably expecting me to talk about the fact that Kevin Cash now has an internet championship match with me at Meltdown because of what he did on Mayhem. You're probably thinking... What has Nitro got to think about this? What has he possibly got to think from all of this? Well, I'll tell you. Fact of the matter is, I could give a damn if Kevin Cash has a match against me at Meltdown for my AWF Internet Championship. I could give a damn if he's facing off against me at Meltdown for that title. Because fact of the matter is, Kevin Cash can't do it. Because he's never been able to beat anybody, not just me, but anybody, when it counts. Look at the kid's record. When it comes to non-title competition, he's full sail ahead. But when it comes to actually, you know, when the time comes to face off for those opportunities, where's the talent? Where is his luck? Where is all this coming from? I don't know. Magically poofs into thin air. Maybe, just maybe, it's divine intervention. Maybe, it's just luck. Maybe, he just doesn't have it. Fact of the matter is, it's not going to be any different in Meltdown when he faces off against me, because fact of the matter is, he can't do it. And he's never been able to do it. And Mayhem was just another fluke. I mean, who else just wins by a roll-up? Who else just wins out of nowhere by a fucking roll-up without any kind of competition? A fucking fluke. That's what. But hey. It's just gonna be fucking Peachy King Meltdown. You wanna know why? Because at Meltdown, I'm gonna do what a lot of people say they're going to do. From other champion holders to even your current president. Who say they're going to make things great again. That they're going to make America great again. That they're going to make titles great again. And not mean it. I'm going to be the one lone person who is going to actually make something great again. Because when I became your internet champion, 
I started a crusade to make your internet championship great again. And at Meltdown, I continue that crusade. And if it means I have to steam roll the fuck through Kevin Cash in order to maintain that momentum, to make sure that I make your internet championship what it should be, and that is greatness, then I'll fucking do that and more so. Because fact of the matter is, people are going to talk and talk and talk about their, how they're going to save things, about how they're going to make things great again, how they're going to restore things to their former glory. I, on the other hand, am not going to mince words. I'm not going to bullshit you with false hopes and lies and bold face fuckery to your face. I, on the other hand, am going to be the one lone sane person who speaks the absolute truth when I say, I will make the internet championship great again. Because that's what I do. And I need no thanks, because I'm not your hero. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Superstar Mayhem. Coming up, we have a match with huge ramifications. AFN is going to take on the Blood Brothers in the rubber match. But, the winning team will become the number one contenders. Whereas the losing team will be forced to disband. But folks, before we get to that, we gotta talk about what we just found out. Some huge news. First, Sean O'Connor has granted Brandon Wolf another match for the Call All Stars special coming up this spring. This is Brandon Wolf's last opportunity. If Brandon Wolf wins a match, he will win back the Hall All-Stars Rumble championship opportunity. But if he loses, he will not be allowed to compete at Call All-Stars. He's just going to be banned from the show. And that would just be unfortunate. We also found out that Kevin Cash will be getting a internet championship opportunity at Meltdown when he takes on the ultimate one, Nitro. Nitro not too happy about it, but it is what it is. Discuss that a little bit more later on. Right now, here comes the Blood Brothers. Blood Brothers, they got a victory over AFN at the Royal Rumble. AFN picked up a victory over the Blood Brothers in the last edition of Superstar Mayhem. This is what led to this match tonight. Both teams have a victory over each other. These guys have been feuding over the course of the past few months, ever since the Blood Brothers came to the AWF and cost AFN a shot at becoming number one contenders for the Tag Team Champions. It's come to this. General Manager Jay Crack has decided that one of these teams have to disband. One of these teams cannot go on any any further after this. But the other is fortunate because they get an opportunity at the tag team titles. Austin Uha is taking it here to Roger Terry. This fighting back. These guys, they know what's on the line. Yes, if you win, you're safe and you get a huge chance to become tag team champions. But if you lose, this is it. This is it for you. You and your tag team partner, your friend, you can't team up anymore. Not here in the AWF. Look at this. There's a German suplex. Here's the cover, but Austin Uha's 
foot was under the rope. But oh, there's a neck snap. Both of these teams started teaming up with each, with each other relatively in the last uh, year or two. However, the friendships between these two teams goes back years and years and years. And look, oh, there's the Omega Driver. The Omega Driver there in the cover. AFN is going to have its end. No. Now look at Ben Hopkins in the ring. He's not even the legal man. Then, oh my God. Reverse Alabama Slam. Normally, we may not see that from Ben Hopkins, but this situation changes everything. He knows that you have to do whatever it takes here. Austin, you know, I was trying to fight back. Austin's got to get a tag to Ben Hopkins, in fact. That would be the smart thing to do. And now there's the Impaler. The Impaler DDT. Referee going for the cover. Is this going to be it? The Blood Brothers? No. You know, I, I have been talking a lot about uh, the, the losing team and what happens to them. But the winning team, they get a tagging tell opportunity. Could be FN who just got the tag there. Is Ben Hopkins now le the legal man? And, my goodness. The Maverick Brothers, the current Superstar Mayhem Tag Team Champions, they have got to be watching this match in the back. They got it, cause it's got to be their next challenger here for when I, I don't know. But oh my God, Roger Terry just clotheslined Ben Hopkins to the outside. Uh oh, this isn't good. And now the Blood Brothers have Ben Hopkins. That double DDT on the outside of the ring. Oh my god, Owen White. That was saying blow. And are these guys going to... The double gut buster. They're just trying to pick apart Ben Hopkins here. You know, this is uh, this is what we usually see a little bit from um, Bar Brothers. But we're seeing it uh, increased here tonight, and I can't say that I blame them. This isn't your normal number one contender chip match where if you don't win you're just a loser if you don't win you can never team with your partner again oh wait a minute a backbreaker and Ben Hopkins taking down Owen White throw into the post Jeez, he came out with an elbow that, that knocked Roger Terry down. Ben Hopkins is on his feet, folks. But oh! He came at Owen White, and Owen White was able, able to counter that. Hey, wait a minute. Oh my god. He's not even the legal man. Oh my god, a backbreaker on the ring apron. Into the ring. Roger T Terry was in the ring and he saw him coming there with the pile driver, the Omega driver. And now. Oh no, the Blood Brothers, are they about to close in on this? There's a crossbody. And the cover. Owen White, is he gonna get it here? Two. No. You can see Austin Uhaw is over there on the ring apron. He's hurting. These guys are giving it their all here tonight. You know, folks, I, I spoke to Austin Uhaw's earlier tonight. And I asked him what this match meant to him, what was all that was on the line, what does it mean to first become number one contender, oh look at this, roll up, Ben Hopkins, two, only a two, 
But like I was saying, I was asking what it meant to him, and folks, he was absolutely speechless. Couldn't give me one word. Ben Hopkins now is using a bunch of words in a physical way. There's a neck breaker. His actions speak for him. Ben Hopkins on the middle rope. Jeez, a senton. Senton coming off the middle rope. Austin Yuha is an illegal man once again. Here's a neck breaker. Knife edge chop. What's this? Double underhook. Oh my good god! Some kind of innovative pile driver of sorts. One, two, is that gonna. No! I thought for a second there, Austin was about to put Owen White away. Owen White was able to kick out, but Austin is now on the top rope. What is Austin looking to do here? Owens up. No oh, double axe handle. And now Austin heading back to the top rope. And wait a minute. Look at that. Knees there from the rogue shark. And a clothesline. A meat hook. Now in the Blood Brothers corner, here's the tag. There's a, wait, oh my god! A power bomb, the neckbreaker assist there. Wait, there goes Ben Hopkins! Ben, ben Hopkins just got knocked off the apron. The Snapmare, the Snapmare driver. Oh no. No, one, two, and three. The bro the Blood Brothers have done it. The Blood Brothers are the number one contenders for the Superstar Mayhem Tag Team titles. But as a result, not only does this rivalry come to an end, but so does the tag team. Of a risen from nothing, Ben Hopkins and Austin Uhas. But the Blood Brothers, are they the next tag team champions? That sucks. That sucks. I'm not gonna make excuses though. Wanna know why? Because a man by the name of Sean O'Connor, a man who claims to be the greatest thing that ever happened to call wrestling, I was such a big deal seven years ago. People should know who I am. Well, nobody knows who you are. Everybody knows who I am. Because unlike you, I'm a star. Everybody loves me. And that bothers you, Sean. It pisses you off. And what did you do on the last episode of Mayhem? You cost me my match. Why did you do that, Sean? Is it jealousy? Is it because you know I'm going to be in the main event at Meltdown? Cat out of the bag, ladies and gentlemen. I will be in that Elimination Chamber match for the AWF World Heavyweight Championship. 
And for the first time in my career here in AWF, I will win the AWF world title. I don't care if it's from Sean. I don't care if it's from Ray. I don't care if it's from Hitman. It doesn't matter. I'm walking out of that chamber with the gold. That's my goal. But that's Meltdown. Tonight, I get to team up with Ray Geddes. To face you, Sean, and Ben Hitman. So, Sean, beware. Ray, you better not get in my way. Because for tonight, just for tonight, you are my tag team partner, and we're going to be tag team partners in this match. But once that bell rings after the match, you're no longer my partner. You are the enemy. Is the enemy my enemy, my friend? In this tag match, you can say so. But once that bell rings, ding, ding, match over, the winner is Travis Sparks. And Ray Geddes, you are now my enemy. And come Meltdown, I don't care who the sixth man is. I don't care who's in this match. I'm walking away with the title. That's, that, that's all I got to say. That's it. Folks, welcome back. Just heard from Travis Marks who not only will be a part of our main event tonight in Tag Team Action, but will also be a participant in the Elimination Chamber. He'll be one of six men in that chamber match. Five have been decided thus far. Folks, we're going to have some more Junior Heavyweight action here tonight. We kick things off with some junior heavyweight action with El Martino and Alberto Jr. And we have Russ Taylor in the ring getting the crowd on their feet. And there's a chant, Russ, Russ, Russ. Russ Taylor better be ready to do more than just get the crowd to chant Russ. Because he's going up against a hot young star here. A man who's, who's done pretty well for himself since coming to the AWF. He's caught a lot of people's attentions. And you got to think, if a, with the win tonight, he's have to throw his name in, uh, in junior heavyweight title contention. Andre Noguera picking up the victory in the last edition of Superstar Mayhem against El Martino. If he can get a win tonight over Russ, he's got to put him at least on the list. I don't know who it, who would be next in line for Brandon Wolf's Junior Heavyweight Championship match. I don't know, but perhaps it could be it could be Andre Noguera. Or could it be Russ Taylor? Russ Taylor with a win tonight could s stop the, the kids' momentum while it's hot. And then Russ Taylor can show everyone that they should be focusing on him. The referee calls for the bell. It's two lock up. Oh, knee to the midsection. Jeez. This is very interesting. Perhaps is what they uh perhaps is what they teach down in Brazil. Nogueira coming from Brazil. Part of the AWF's uh world talent search. AWF sent people down all over the world. And then I found that the best from Brazil was Andre Nogueira and brought him to Superstar Mayhem. And there's the counter there. And then it's a Gurry. All running on the forearm. 
And now, what says there's a oh picture perfect drop kick. Whoa! What another? I got. I got. I got to say it again. I got to use the same call. A picture perfect drop kick because that's exactly what it is. It, it might have been slightly better than perfect. And now, Nogueira on the top rope. Body splash. One, two. Only a two. I thought when he was heading up there, he was going to go for his uh, his shooting star press. Oh, my God. Nogueira risking it all. Flew up in the air. Almost with no momentum. And, just took, and took down Russ Taylor. Nogueira had him back into the ring. Nogueira, extremely impressive thus far in the early going of this matchup. See the redden on uh, Russ Taylor's face. Oh, oh, off the ropes. It's a tornado DDT. Look at this. Is that a blue thunder bomb? Is this going to do it? Two and the... No. Near fall there. Almost got it there with the blue thunder bomb. But here comes Russ Taylor. Oh, and right after the arm. And a clothesline. Sending Nogueira to the outside. You got to wonder what Russ Taylor is looking to do here. Oh, look at this strategic. You wait. No. Wait, that, that, that's showing the backfire. There's a springboard drop kick. Russ Taylor waited. Allowing Nogueira to get back to the ring. And Nogueira was able to strike back. What the hell is he doing? Whoa! Shoot it, Star Press! Nogueira just hit a shoot it, Star Press from off the ropes. One, two, then three. And just like that, Andre Nogueira picks up another victory here on Superstar Mayhem. Very impressive. Like I said, he's got to throw his name at, in, at least in the conversation for Junior Heavyweight Championship contenders here. Oh, wait a minute. No way. Oh my god. You have got to be kidding me. Attorney at law. Eddie Sleaze. What the hell is he doing here? Eddie Sleeth. The biggest attorney in call wrestling. He's represented people here in the call business before, folks. Not only that, he was one of the most uh, popular stars in the FSW promotion a few years back. I didn't even know Eddie Sleeves was still competing. I thought he was just still pra only practicing. But it appears Eddie Sleeves is here on Superstar Mayhem. But but why? And why now? Look at that money coming from the ceiling. Nogueira coming into the ring. He's taking the spotlight there. It's a stare down between these two. Some words are being exchanged. Nicely he's heading outside the ring. Did you just say think about it? Folks, Eddie Sleaze is here in the AWF.
awakening. Have you felt it? Folks, we are back. And this is a moment I've been waiting for throughout the whole show. In fact, since the last Superstar Mayhem, when the news broke on the AWF website, notice I've said that a few times. Check out the AWF website. Lots of great news, breaking news. All that you could ask for. New updates to the website. Check it out. But what I'm referring to is the man right here, CJ Hawkins. He came back at the Royal Rumble. Eliminated Brent Thompson, the man who put him on the shelf months ago. CJ Hawkins returned to Superstar Man in the last edition. Picked up a, a solid win for himself. Brent Thompson was not here. In fact, he was given the night off. But he's here tonight. And from what we have been told, Brent Thompson will address CJ Hawkins and has some sort of proposal for him. That that is all that is all I know. That's the extent of uh, the information that was given to me. I can try and speculate. But with Brent Thompson, it's very hard to do that, as we all know. CJ Hawkins, though, is out here. Fans excited to see Hawkins back in the AWF ring. hear from CJ Hawkins first no oh, no it looks like Brent Thompson he wants to get to the ring before any uh before there's any talking there he is the psychotic arm breaking freak Brent Thompson Brent Thompson has gone on a rampage of months and months and months of breaking people's arms. He's broken Tyler Riley's arm. He's broken CJ Hawkins' arm. He's even breaking, broken TJ Arminio's arm. The most innocent of all. And it didn't matter to him. But now someone has come back to fight Brent Thompson after their arm was broken. In CJ Hawkins. So, how is Brian Thompson going to address that? Okay, 
Hawkeye! 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 How dare you! How dare you! How dare you get in the way of my path towards winning back my precious, my precious AWF World Heavyweight Championship? Who in the hell do you think you are? I was set to make history! I was going to win the Royal Rumble match from the number one entry spot. And I thought I had exterminated you. I exterminated that no good, greedy, backstabbing loser of a man known as the Teachers. I thought I had completely made the extreme one extinct but he did the rest of the job himself he is clearly too afraid to come back for good because he knows if he were to come back I would not only break both of his arms again but I would but I would break both of his legs as well and I would once again exterminate him and now, and now, you have somehow returned. If it were not for you, I would have gone out to defeat the man that loves to hate. And I would once again have my precious, precious, precious AWF World Heavyweight Championship. Hell. It would have been even better if not for both you and the interference of the young blood in that championship match. Because everyone knows I could have easily taken out Wonderbread. But back onto you, Hawkeye. Now, I wish I could have been there on the last mayhem, but unfortunately, Management was too afraid of what I would do. What did they say? They say I'm a loose cannon. <laughs> and a freak of nature. <laughs> and yet, with my dear loyal servant, Carlos, back at the Thompson Mansion, was doing the research, he informed me that my current AWF contract is set to be extinct. But fortunately for me, I have heard that the Scorpio knows about this and has given me quite the marvelous offer to, how do they say, jump sheep to the uprising. Now, Crackman is also preparing for me an Ambrosial offer, for I am quite high on his priority list based on how I have exterminated the weak here on the Mayhem. Which brings me to why I am here, Hawkeye. I am here to challenge you to a match at the Melting Down. An extreme rules match. I am here to present to you the offer with the following special stipulations. Given my contract situation, my knowledge that you want to obliterate me, and my want to exterminate you, here's what I propose. We have the match at the event. If you win the match, I will leave the mayhem for the uprising, and I will forever leave you alone. However, if I win the match, you must accept the terms of extermination. Now what does that mean exactly? I want to exterminate you in a way that will leave you forever miserable 
for the rest of your days. And how do these normal people say it? You are my bitch. Hawkeye, prepare yourself. At the melting down, you will be permanently exterminated. Exterminate, 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 exterminate. So you challenge me to an Extreme Rules match, and if I beat you, you agree to leave Mayhem forever. You never, you stay the hell out of my life, you stay out of my career. And you stay out of AWF Mayhem. But if I don't win, then I have to accept your extermination, huh? That's exactly what you wanted this whole time. You know, CJ Hawkins stands for a lot of things. He always stays true to himself. He always fought for what is right and wrong. He always fought for what he always believed in. He always been a loner. And you're taking my legacy. You want to take my legacy into your hands as an extermination. You want to take my legacy that I have built since 2007. And you want to make that in the extermination if I fail to beat you. So as far as your little challenge is concerned, I accept your challenge. If that's what it takes to get rid of you out of my life, then that's what it's going to have to take. Oh yeah, I accept your challenge. And you're going to have to kill me to make me an extermination. Now wait a minute, Hawkins! Hawkins has got him hawked! He's got Hawk's wings! CJ Hawkins just laid out Brian Thompson, but folks, they're gonna meet at Meltdown! Oh my god! Well, isn't this lovely? This is, this is what I want. This is what I want from talent. Absolute perfection. You know what? I'm not gonna lie. I was never a fan of AFN. I always thought they were overrated. But you two. You two are something. I'm proud of you both. I really am. <sighs> but sadly, everything comes to the cost. You see, I have the, these pesty brothers. These, these hardly intelligent brothers who keep pestering me who, who I find are like cockroaches no matter how many times I crush them they keep coming back they're the fucking Maverick brothers now look, look if you want if you too want to make it in this business in this promotion you will beat those damn Magic Brothers. If not, I'll trade you to whatever show I feel like trading you to and get real talent. Am I understood? Good.
Ladies and gentlemen, we just heard the announcement. The Blood Brothers will get their tag team title opportunity on the 40th edition of Superstar Mayhem. The Maverick Brothers better be ready because the Blood Brothers are looking good. Also, folks, look at this breaking news. Casey Gordon at the Goonie will be here for Superstar Mayhem episode 40. Folks, this is looking stacked. But after the 40th edition of Mayhem, we have the event that will be co-sponsored by Uprising and Superstar Mayhem. As so we are on the road to Glory Days 4, Moon Moon will get a chance at revenge when he takes on Tyler Watson. We found out the news earlier on tonight. Kevin Cash will get a chance at the Internet Championship when he faces the Ultimate One, Nitro. Don Martin will face off against his former associate, Brian Stone. The Extreme Championship will be defended as Brock Manson defends against Mason Chronic. Which should just be a brutal contest. Just like Superstar Mayhem's main event for Meltdown. The Elimination Chamber for the World Heavyweight Championship. Ben Hitman defends against Sean O'Connor, Travis Sparks, Ray Geddes, and Tank. We have yet to det determine a sixth participant in this chamber, but folks are already shaping up to be star-studded. And now is time for our main event. Also, some other contests that have been announced for Meltdown include the match that we just found out about before we went to to the backstage area in that Brent Thompson will face off against CJ Hawkins in an, in an extermination match and in Brent Thompson's words if if he if he loses and CJ Hawkins wins Brent Thompson will leave Superstar Mayhem to go over to Uprising but if CJ Hawkins loses and Brent Thompson wins he explained it as CJ Hawkins would become his bitch. Scary, scary, scary things there for CJ Hawkins. That's if he doesn't walk out with the victory that night. But, speaking of scary things, did you ever think that Travis Sparks and the Raging Redneck Ray Geddes would be on the same side? Well, I wouldn't call it the same side. They're on the same side of the ring. Nowhere near the same side of, uh, in regard to their relationship. These guys have been at each other's throats for the course of the last year and other call promotions. But now they're being put together here to face off against two other guys who don't exactly get along either in Ben Hitman and Sean O'Connor. Fans of uh, Call of Honor know about the history between Ray Geddes and Sean Ray Geddes and Travis Barks as that visual of them being standing next to each other had to be odd to see. General Manager Jay Crack decided to make a tag team main event and he chose these two teams which to be honest folks no matter who he pitted again to team with each other it would have been very odd whether you would have swapped it around whether it would have been a, a Ben Hitman and a Ray Geddes team oh dear god I don't know if they could, that could ever work with the history between them two or a Ray Geddes and Sean O'Connor team these, those guys have been going at it, at it for the past few months here. Ray Geddes in fact laid out Sean O'Connor with a red eye on the last Superstar Mayhem. And then those two guys, Sean O'Connor and Travis Sparks. And not after the last Superstar Mayhem when Sean O'Connor cost Travis Sparks the match with Ben Hit. Jay Crack decided 
to put Travis and Ray against Sean O'Connor and the World Heavyweight Champion. And there he is, Ben Hitman. Can't be the slightest bit happy. Especially knowing that he's going to have to defend that championship inside the chamber. And th three of his opponents are the three who are on the outside of the ring. Can't be happy about that one bit. Ben Hitman teamed up tonight with Sean O'Connor. Let's keep in mind, folks, that these guys very much don't get along. In fact, they they went they fought each other at CyberSlam because Sean O'Connor, as Ben Hitman would believe, cost him the World Heavyweight Championship. Sean O'Connor on that night also defeated Ben Hitman. Ben Hitman was not World Heavyweight Champion then. He defeated him. Sean O'Connor feels for that reason that he deserves a world championship match and he's going to get that inside the elimination chamber I'm just wondering how the hell are these two teams going to coexist and look at this already some bicker in there between Sean O'Connor and Ben Hitman the Bronco Buster by Travis Travis Park starting this off and you know he couldn't wait to get his hands on Sean O'Connor after the last edition of Mayhem oh jeez boot to Hitman I don't know if that was by mistake or if that was done on purpose. You know, Travis Sparks, not a big fan of Ben Hitman either. Ben Hitman had some some comments that he made about Travis Sparks trying to undermine Sparks. Now Travis, look at this. Whoa. Oh my god. What a maneuver. And a cover. Two. It's only a one. And the chop up. This off the ropes. There's that scissors. There's a jawbreaker by Sean O'Connor. The leg lariat. Sean O'Connor, first time in this contest, looks to be going on the offense. There's a gut buster. A heel kick, jeez. Sean Connor laying it in with those kicks is one thing that he. There may not be anyone better. Tag to Ben Hitman. And for at least once in this contest, Ben Hitman and Sean Connor were on the same page, although. So they kind of nudged into each other there. Ben Hitman taking it to Travis Sparks, who he fought on the last Superstar Mayhem. You know, some would argue that Travis Sparks was just, you know, a few moments away of defeating Ben Hitman. I mean, we'll never know if that's the case, thanks to Sean O'Connor, but... You gotta think that eats at Ben Hitman. Oh, jeez, attacking the leg. Ben Hitman knows, I mean, he knows Travis Sparks is going to be in the chamber match. Especially if Travis Sparks may be able to beat Ben Hitman. Oh, there's a nice thrust kick. Almost a super kick. He, you know, if you can injure Travis Sparks, it helps you. Oh, oh look, here's the counter. It's our first DDT. Hitman, the cover. One. Only a one. Look at this. Rolling them up here. Small package. Only a one. Ben Hitman was trying to, to steal the win there. See, I, I'm very curious to see the, the mindsets 
of all the competitors in this match. There's a lot that they could be going through their minds. They could be wanting to be get, getting out of here because they don't want to team with their tag team partner. They could be wanting to stay in here so they could get revenge. Oh, look at there's the lion salt. One, two, then only a two had been able to get the shoulder up. You now maybe they want to get their hands on participants of the other team. Perhaps they want to get an advantage for Meltdown. Sparks! Oh my god! Springboard Tornado DDT! Oh, look at that. Ray... Dissension is in the air. And there comes Hitman. Ray Geddes got off the apron. I guess was not interested in, t in getting in the ring. Now look at this. Oh, come on. Rope break, but still, that, that was disrespectful from Ben Hitman there. There's a Hurricane Rana. Look at this, and, and, now they're, and now he gets a tag. Travis Sparks put his hand out, and was like, Are you going to tag me? Ray Gattis. Ray Gattis is in, folks. Now the stare down. Oh, Hitman. But here comes Ray. The Raging Redneck. And off into the ropes. There's a spine buster. Oh my god, those closed fists to the face of Ben Hitman. We know the history between those two men. Fought back a call All Star Seven in a brutal match that went all around the arena. Many people were talking about what a great contest it was and how brutal it was. Sue also battled an inside Hell in a Cell. Now, these guys, they haven't faced off against one another in a little while now. But you got to believe that some rivalries just don't die. This has got to be one of them. Hitman on the top, but Travis Sparks! Travis Sparks throwing Hitman off the top. Giving an assist to Ray Gettis. No. Hitman able to throw Ray into the corner. Clothesline the Bulldog. Sparks is pissed. Oh my god, Hitman! Punching Travis in the face. Look at the carnage, folks. And look, uh oh. In comes Sean O'Connor. He's going to get in here with Ray. Got it. So, hey, Ray. Ray caught him. And I noticed there, Sean O'Connor was kind of, um, perhaps he was ducking, maybe, Ray Gattis. And thought this was the time to get in there as Hitman was laying it to Ray, but Sean O'Connor, now he's back on the offense. But he, you can see he, he took a little bit of a beat in there from Ray. Just like he took on the last Superstar Mayhem when Ray Gattis laid him out. Oh my god! It was crazy, folks. Is that going to do it? No, only a two. And then, oh! The Pele kick. Sean O'Connor connecting with the Pele kick. Could be setting up for the end here. Maybe a KOS. Maybe a Canadian Destroyer. Or Drake in the back. Ray with the counter. And Ray. Ray throwing those fists in the face of Sean. And there's a clothesline in the corner. Oh, Ray Geddes. Ray Geddes stomping away. Stomping a muddle. Oh, into the face. Right into the face of Sean O'Connor. Oh, wait, look. Red Eye. Red Eye. All the way up. But Sean O'Connor able to push him away. And look. Oh, dude, look at that. Ray Geddes went for the Red Eye. 
Sean O'Connor was he was able to get push Ray away, but <laughs> quickly got out of this match. Ray just sent him off that apron. Sean O'Connor he felt that red eye on Superstar Mayhem the last uh, the last edition, and it's not fun. Could be getting one of those inside the elimination chamber at Meltdown. It's gonna be the first time that we're gonna see. See them really go at it. Saw a little bit of a preview here tonight. And oh my god, German suplex by Ben Hitman. Into the ropes. And up. Oh my god, launching Ray up. And Ray came crashing down. Knee breaker. Notice that's where Ray has got the knee brace on. What the hell is Hitman looking to do? Snap suplex. Hitman feeling confident right now. Attacking Ray. Stomping on Ray while Ray's down. Ray trying to get to his feet. Oh, Ray fighting back. Oh! I, I think my Hitman's busted open. I think Hitman's bleeding. Was that blow to the face. Oh, look at this. Travis Sparks is the legal man now. Oh, man. Jumping elbow to the bad Hitman. Whoa, whoa, what the hell is this? It's an innovative takedown. Jeez, going after the leg of Ben Hitman. What the hell? What the hell? The handspring kick. And now Travis on the ring apron. Launching himself to the top rope. Frog Splash! He connected with the Frog Splash, and that is that? No! Only a two. I thought I thought Travis Sparks was going to just pin Ben Hitman there, and that would have been huge. Oh, Hitman. Blows at the midsection and all. You can see that. And he, that blow that Ray, Ray Gattis gave the Hitman's face. Really starting to. The show there, there's blood dripping down his face. Oh! Hitman sending right off the apron. He's got him up, and there's a suplex. Spin a wheel kick. Uh oh, the Hitman might be setting up for the end here. He's uh, maybe thinking Maple Knee. No drop kick. Oh man, throwing his wrist on the mat. I thought Hitman was going to go for the close there, but it looks like he's just trying to pick apart Travis Sparks here. Maybe toy with him a little bit. And he's staring Travis Sparks in the face. Travis Sparks is taking a little bit of a beating in this match. Oh, Travis Sparks able to get out of that. Able to get out of that. Hey, maybe scoop slam. But oh, the Hartford killer. The Hartford Killer there by Ben Hitman. And now, Suplex. Textbook Suplex by Ben Hitman. And stomping away again. 
Oh, he's going to go for the Germans. Oh, wait, whoa. Travis Sparks is able to get out of it. He flipped out of it. Oh, the chop block. Chop block to Ben Hitman. Oh, my God. Super kick. Travis Sparks connecting with a super kick. And there goes O'Connor. The cover. One, two, then three. Travis Sparks has just pinned the world heavyweight champion. Oh my god. Travis Sparks picked up a hell of a lot of momentum here. He just pinned Ben Hitman. Oh, well, oh, oh, look at that. Don't trust Ray Geddes. Put his hand out there for a handshake. Congratulations. I thought it was something was fishy, and he just laid out Travis Sparks with the red eye. And, oh man, the Pele kick by Sean O'Connor. Sean O'Connor back into the ring. And there's the KOS. That's got to be retribution for last mayhem. Folks, Sean O'Connor, Ray Geddes, Travis Sparks, Ben Hitman are going to be in the elimination chair. Right? Wait, that's tank! Tank is also going to be in the elimination chamber match. Could Tank be on his way to regain the World Heavyweight Championship at Meltdown? Folks, those five men are going to be locked inside the elimination chamber at Meltdown. But before we get there, the 40th edition of Mayhem is going to be huge. The tag team titles are on the line. Casey Gordon and the Goonie are going to be there. Folks, thank you for watching. We hope to see you there.